Good evening. With a uh, quorum being present, I call this meeting of the Jacksonville Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee to order. Uh, everybody has a copy of the agenda. Take a minute, take a look at it. And if everybody is pleased with that. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, everybody had a copy of the minutes emailed to them last week. And uh, anybody have any changes? No? If not, looking for a motion? Move to be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Okay. Going to get us down to the director's report, which should be our last one from uh, <laughs> Mr. Last, Chestnut. Last time you'll have to listen to me. Yeah, before that, I uh, want to wish you the best uh, moving up to Rockville. Sorry to see you go. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. Uh, again, sorry to see you go. And uh, done some great things for uh, the city while you've been here. Yes. And uh, Rockville will be uh, lucky to have you. Thank you very much. All right. And with that, Let's hear what you got to say for the last month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'd like to update you on a few of the projects that are that are going on. Um, as you guys will probably remember, the Pardiff grant, the work that's going to be done at Phillips, we were having to reduce the scope of that to keep it within the budget. Um, once we finally got it scaled down to the size where everybody felt comfortable that, yeah, this project will fit within the, the dollar constraints, we had to resubmit the financials to Part F, Part F uh, Parks and Recreation Trust Fund, um, for their approval. We did that. Typically, is just a, a formality, but you never know because it is a resubmission. Um, we got the official approval for the scaled down, but still all the same major elements um, proposal. So we officially got that today. Thank you, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, so that work will be full speed ahead. Um, I don't know exactly, I don't know if engineering has given us the date we can start seeing shovels in the ground. Mm -mm. No, not yet. Still with the engineering firm. And I brought um, one of the concepts that they've proposed for the layout of the park. If you have a minute to take a look at that before you leave. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have a version that we can upload for the, the viewing way. public to see, but we will get one up there. But if you guys want to see that, that's uh, that's what they came up with. It, again, includes the canoe and kayak launch, the amphitheater, the new playground, picnic shelter, restrooms, uh, new parking lot, new traffic flow. So it's uh, uh, really redoing that entire facility. And hopefully taking advantage of Cheney Creek as a, an amenity, as a feature. So that was the update on Phillips. Um, Jack Amiette, as you can probably imagine, last week's wet weather sort of put everything on a, on a stall, but this week they're back at it full speed ahead. They are projecting July 1, the work will be completed. And that work will be the, this phase will be the baseball field with lights and the redone parking lot. That will be the completion of this phase and they're saying that should be done by July 1, which will give the sod enough time to nest so that come spring we'll be able to play on it. Um, the other one is Northeast Creek. I know we've been mentioning each month the status of the lagoons being filled. They are just about topped off. Um, so what you will be seeing probably again by about July 1 will be um, straw and seed being spread out there. We're not going to do the sod because this isn't its final configuration. But in the meantime, getting some grass growing out there, uh, you'll be seeing that by the end of the spring. We also um, are still deliberating on the uh, grant for the canoe and kayak launch at Northeast Creek Park. I think I mentioned that, although well, I'm getting a couple of looks like you don't remember what I'm talking about, so let me read the looks. Um, several months ago, we were approached by one of the state bodies. Deaner. Deaner, Department of Natural Resources, um, because we had reached out to them previously. They said, would you be, are you still looking to do some uh, water access work? They said, yes, we are. We, you know, part of our master plan for Northeast Creek Park included next to the boat ramp where you have the big um, U-shaped airy cove uh, to put a canoe and kayak launch right there. 
So we submitted that grant. Uh, this is a nice grant in that it only requires a 25% match. They awarded it to us. Um, city would be asked to put up about $34,000 and we would get about $111,000 from the state to complete that. Uh, we are still looking at that as a city. We haven't committed to it yet, but I wanted you to know that regardless of whether or not it comes to fruition, this is another successful grant that uh, we've pursued and, and been awarded, partially as a result of the master plan that you guys all helped um, get through and also due to Amanda's wonderful grant writing. Um, I think for the projects... Oh, I guess we could at least let you also know that the um, Lejeune Trail, the, uh, what do we call it, the actual, the um, 24 and Lejeune Trail, mm -hmm. that 1.8 mile stretch that we've been working on since before I got here. My understanding, you know, knock on wood, um, is that the base is finally, we're finally getting to the last hurdles. So again, hopefully within the next several months, we will get the final approval on that one. The money's there. That one's not a question of the money at all. It's a matter of all the approvals. Tim, is that the connector to close to the bridge back to, to downtown? Johnson and yes. That yes, entire. Yes. 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 It okay. will take us from okay. the, the the bridge. Okay. Uh, cross Scales Creek by Great. all the monuments okay. and bring you right down here, okay. right to downtown. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So that it would fall off what's been a dedicated bike lane in front of City Hall, and then you'll start on a trail. Where would the trail part? I believe start? the trail does not cross, um, does not come to the cemetery. It stops at the monuments. At the mon. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to go through the monuments to get on to it. No, it will. It will take you past the monuments. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. if you're coming towards downtown, yeah. once you get to that intersection, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the yeah. road. Right. Um, but where Montfort Point Road, yeah. right. when you get to that intersection is where this, this stretch of trail will end and the bike lanes <coughs> okay. will pick okay. up. Okay. So that will give you access to downtown yeah. and, and right onto the, the bridge and the rest of the, of the nice. trail. Yeah, yeah no, it's an important link. It's just there, there are so many stakeholders involved. It's, you know, we all know the old saying about herding cats. You think you have it, okay, ready, go, and something will change somewhere. So it's, uh, but we're, we're getting close, getting close. Um, with that, let me respond to the, the chairman's comments. Um, I've really enjoyed my five years in Jacksonville. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. I'm very proud of what all of us have helped accomplish. Um, I'm excited for the future. I think that uh, you, there are a lot of good things in the pipeline. We've just mentioned a few of them. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be watching you guys from afar, there is no doubt. Um, Wish I would, you well. Thank you. Uh, this was not, I, I mean, it was in the, the memo I sent to you guys. I was not looking for another job. Uh, it's not that I was unhappy or unsatisfied or any of that. This is one of those rare opportunities that fell in my lap. And uh, How close to home is this? 30 minutes. Yeah, my, my parents are still alive and they're up there. My brother's up there with his wife. My son is up there. So, yeah, it takes me back to family, too. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm excited about that opportunity as well. Thank you for all the good wishes. Um, but, yes, I will be watching you guys from afar. And you will don't be surprised if you get an email or a phone call if I think you're slacking. Yeah. <laughs> um, would encourage you to, to please, we, the, the new configuration of advisory committees was about a year ago now. We, it took a while, in my opinion, for us to get, we, had, we were a very high performing advisory committee prior to some of the reconfiguring. My opinion, we've struggled a little bit in the interim. I would encourage you guys to keep pushing. Each one of you is a strong, intelligent, effective advocate uh, for what you believe in, especially as it relates to recreation and parks. I would encourage you to, to keep doing that um, and, and find other ways to make this body even more impactful. Uh, I think you can. So, With that, Mr. Chair, that's uh, all of the director's report. Okay. Before you move on, Steve, I'm sorry, can I ask a question mm -hmm. about your report? Do we have a, in a city park at this point a kayak launch? 
In a city, yes, Sturgeon, Sturgeon City. Sturgeon City. Okay, you're right. Thank you. I'm sorry. So yes. that, but that would be the second one to a whole. Well, it depends yeah. on which one comes in first, um, right. Phillips or it's, Northeast it's Creek. On their boat, but then there would be, be three, fabulous. and they're they're long paddles, but they're doable from one to the other. Thank you. Does There's one on Blue Creek too, but that's county. Yes. Yeah. Right. Will uh, Cheney Creek have to be dredged at all? Supposedly Sometimes? not. Well, okay. Which is why we have the canoe and kayak kayak launch shown at the end that it is okay gotcha. um, you know they they monitor that creek constantly and we're told we're assured that even in uh, you know the dry season that that end is is floatable okay. that's on the downstream end right Tim mm -hmm. yes yes that's the best place to do it when you yeah. get up from there it's it's uh, touch and go okay and, yeah any other questions Okay, it gets us to new business, and I'd like to welcome Dr. Woodruff, the city manager, and he'd uh, like to speak to us a little bit tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, one part that Tim uh, did not mention is Jacksonville Landing. Okay. If you have not been between the bridges uh, <coughs> or been over the bridges in the last week or two, uh, we are very pleased that the contractor is on board. The what we call under the water dredging is now uh, nearly complete. The installation of the ramps themselves uh, are in the process. You may see that they are pouring the slabs on site and they will simply slide them in place. And when Jacksonville Landing is, is open, which we're now being told it will be sometime in September of this year, it won't take them long to actually build the parking lot and everything, it also will have a kayak launch facility. So we will be able to have a blue way where you can uh, start at one park, go to another, go to another. And remember, not only will the Phillips Park have restrooms and picnic shelters, but Jacksonville Landing will, and of course you also will have those down at Sturgeon City. So it's, it's really a new adventure, I think, of water or a new era of water activities for the city. What I'd like to spend a few minutes uh, tonight is talking with you and getting your thoughts about the future relative to the director slot. I'm very pleased to tell you that today we announced that uh, Susan Baptist and Michael LaQuarrie are going to step up and be basically co-directors for the next many months. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, too much yelling for the American hockey team at the Olympics there. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it, it did not do a lot of good, but we won't go there. But uh, we are very pleased that Susan and, and Michael bring real skills in their divisions. Uh, we believe that with uh, assistance from the deputy manager, Ron Massey, and myself, and then continued great support from Amanda and others that this interim is going to work very well. We have advertised and we have now received about 40 applications. And it's, uh, it's interesting to see the range of applications. They're everywhere from people who have a master's degree in recreation to literally a person who is a clerk at Dick's Sporting Goods making $8.35 and wants to become our Parks and Recreation Director. I think one of the things that tells us is we need to do a better job of advertising what we actually do, you know. But uh, <clears throat> we are very blessed that we have, uh, you know, some good, good crop of people interested. What I'm interested in, though, from your perspective, and you can give me comments tonight, but I'd also welcome them over the next several weeks. What is it that you're looking for as an advisory board member in the new director? What specific skill sets? Now, this is not a critique of Tim, what his strengths and weaknesses were. Uh, what they really are is, as with any time you have a vacancy, my belief is always that you don't just go higher. The first thing you do is analyze and determine what is it you want for the next era. It's no different whether it's a manager or whether it's someone in your own employment. The time to evaluate the future is when the job is vacant. And that's what we're going to be doing is really analyzing <coughs> what skills. You know, Tim has had a great set of skills. We're now entering a new era where a lot of the parks master plan has been completed. We have a lot of capital things being constructed. So the type of direction that I'm asking you to give is should we be focusing on programmatic things? And if so, what types of programs? <coughs> Pardon me. Should we be focusing once again? <coughs> pardon me, on more uh, of the capital side, the physical side, or should we be doing something else? Should we be trying to find someone who can bring us more senior programs? 
that's the type of direction that we're looking for. And again, not necessarily for tonight. I would welcome your input for tonight, but especially for you to take time over the next several weeks as you uh, sit on your veranda and enjoy the spring weather, which I've been told will last at least through tomorrow. So you could give us your thoughts, but I would open that up tonight. Uh, any initial thoughts of the type of person, type of skill set you'd like for us to be looking for? All right, that was a good suggestion. <laughs> Who has a second suggestion? Well, uh, having, I think, if I'm correct, uh, the last three parts of rec uh, heads were Ken Hagen, Mike Carter, and Tim. Uh, in, in looking at all three of those together, I'm sitting here saying to myself, well, they all had pluses in that they were people, persons, because, as Tim will tell you, sometimes this job requires that you walk a delicate balance between different groups and not make the wrong group irritated and be able to quickly make some adjustment to make as many people happy as possible while still doing what you do. Um, they all seemed to have a, uh, an interest in trying to bring outside activities here, like uh, uh, state championships and things of that nature, which is one of those things that makes our local people happy because it gets people to come in here and spend a little money and stay in a few hotel rooms. Um, I, I, I really, I don't envy you, Dr. Woodruff, because you've got to find somebody now to continue the string that you've had so far, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a tough. Uh, you got to find somebody that's all three rolled up into one. Uh, good luck. Yeah. I hope that person's there. But it, what it does set, say to me is that in in Ken and Michael, we had two people that were local, and when we went outside the area, uh, there were some people that said, "Well, this person's from outside." what does he know about us and I think what Tim's shown us is that he's been able to jump in here and do a super job yeah. so it, it should make people feel better about bringing in these foreigners yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, the, if, if, if that person is out there I just want the best person possible you know whatever they are wherever they are whatever their qualifications are I just want the best person possible thoughts and not on, I mean and what you were saying, I think Homer's absolutely right, but is there a time, I, I think jobs become much more multifaceted, especially with, at this point, you have challenges economically. I mean, it's just such a multifaceted job. Not only look at the director position, but maybe your upper management at the rec department to make sure, you know, where are you with those? And that might be the opportunity. Not to try and get, I, I think Susan and Mike do a fabulous job of what they're doing, but looking at their skill sets, or who, what skill sets are needed to complement? Exactly. <laughs> you know, What's to needed? get because it's such a diverse job, and I, I think that's an opportunity as an organization to say, okay, what in our upper management do we need skill set wise, and you can build from there. So. That's a good good suggestion. I don't know. Um, just with everything happening with base and that shift of youth sports and. I mean, that's a whole lot of people to now kind of handle. So I think Tim's done a good job in listening to him discuss budget-wise what they can handle, what you know, what can they outsource to a different group that maybe can service that. But I think that's going to be a huge factor in this. It's not the same as what Tim's leaving. We're about to go through an explosive growth um, with the youth sports shifting from off base. So being prepared for that and maybe working confined budget and a little bit creative in those revenue sources. I think the citizens scream that there needs to be more for the youth around here and the senior citizens. Forget us middle-aged folks. We don't need anything, but I think, yeah. Uh, well, I thought you were in the youth category <laughs> myself. <laughs> I thought it was too, as well as the state of the But yeah, I, I think that a well-rounded round, person, uh, I mean, I still think we can glue him to a seat. <laughs> I think we should look for somebody with uh, integrity, uh, very good management skills. Uh, they should be able to delegate, not try to do it all. Again, well-rounded. They need to see the bigger picture. Visionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, they can't be like looking at what we're, you know, trying to solve today. It's that, you know, what's out there. I mean, we got a lot of stuff coming. Yeah. You know, that uh, someone's going to be beyond our control. You know, and they got to try to influence what's going to be happening here. So, 
I'm, I'm big on the vision thing. I made a few notes. I, first one I said was integrity, positive example, innovative team player, excellent communication, think outside the box, work well with people. That matches the list that I had down before I came in, so I appreciate that. <laughs> but as far as a philosophy, you're going to you have to talk to, the, uh, like everybody agrees, you have to talk to the person applying and find out where he's coming from and what his, what would he like, how much does he know about Jacksonville? Did he just fill out the application or did he do some homework and find out about this place or if it's, if it's just a job? A lot of times you can kind of weed through it. Well, obviously we're not looking for anyone who's just looking for a job. <clears throat> right. That's always the case. I was, I was going to say that uh, you and your position uh, go through this on a fairly regular basis. I'm talking about this hiring process. <clears throat> and I'm sure over time you develop a feel for a person with all of these skill sets that have been mentioned. Uh, so it's probably incumbent on that. Uh, interview or investigating committee to uh, ferret out what what is appropriate and, and, and relative and so forth. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that uh, in the almost four years that I've been privileged to be here, uh, we have had significant turnover in the senior management. And every time we have gone through uh, a process, you've always are amazed at the reason why people are looking to come to you and it's everything from well I was going to retire in four years and I want to live next to the coast and yes we have a couple of those applications in this group mm -hmm. uh, to people who have uh, what I'll call finished their their uh, finished their internships meaning that they've been superintendents or division directors and they're now looking to make the next step into the profession as a manager and then you have everything in between and then you also have those folks who as I said just happen to uh, you know want to go from uh, uh, one position to another but it's going to be it will be interesting but again uh, any other thoughts that y'all have of very good input I, I agree with everything you've said Anyone else want to add to the list of suggestions? I'm a, and I and this is I'm a big proponent of education based from yeah just the whole academic part, but also continuing it. I think it is important if you have someone who comes out of the park and rec field that have the connections because you know Jacksonville always does a great job but we don't we haven't invented the wheel and if you've got the connections through professional associations and things like that to t reach out to your colleagues in Rockville or you know, Cleveland or wherever it may be or Lenore County you know that I think that's important yeah. too, to I say. agree with that all right well if you have any other thoughts over the next several weeks uh, let me know at the current uh, process we are very pleased as I said today that we've announced that Susan and Michael are going to step up and we would hope to have a, a new director on board by probably June, maybe July. And we don't believe that there is a necessity to, to uh, you know, find someone to run the ship immediately. The ship's been run well. The staff is well trained. We believe that we can continue and that we will do it very methodically and we will try to keep you informed. So, so you're still accepting applications? Applications yes. will continue until filled. There is okay. no we did not run the ad in such a way, you know, where, it, where the application period ends at a certain date. Okay. Uh, we, we are, though, in the process. I spent this weekend uh, reading about uh, 40 applications that the uh, Human Resource Department had divided into three categories. Those they thought were strong candidates, those that were, were potential candidates, and then those that were not serious candidates. But, you know, I read all 40 of those. and. Uh, uh, found some some good interesting people whether that will be the final group we interview we will wait and see and who would interview at this point is that just something you do or do you take a committee with current staff members I mean normally what I do is uh, ask the department heads and human resources to uh, look at the applications after I've looked at them and pick a group that they would like to do uh, what I used to call in the old days a telephone interview, but now they've invented Skyping and uh, all those other things. <laughs> and so we will we will begin by a round of what I'll call uh, off-site, where we're we're here and they're wherever they're from, you know, Washington, Minnesota, 
Virginia, and we even got a couple of good applications from uh, someplace up in Virginia, Tim. <laughs> but uh, no, we will do that by uh, Skyping with them so that we can actually see them, uh, look at a presentation, that type thing. And then if they uh, meet that, then we will actually bring them in town for a meeting with some of the other department heads to really determine the chemistry of the players between the department heads. Do they have the real philosophies that we're trying to accomplish here in Jacksonville? So it's a, it's a lengthy process, and I'm certainly not the only uh, participant. Uh, normally I begin the process, and then I end the process. And I'll let the other folks who help run the city be a major component in making a recommendation to me. While I have you, let me, uh, if we can switch gears a second. Uh, we sent out a questionnaire, and I met, uh, of course, with your chairman and vice chairman uh, last week, and we talked about uh, this meeting. We're very pleased that out of the 56 questionnaires that were mailed out, we got about half in, and I thought that was a good response. We asked people to fill them out anonymously, and uh, that way we felt people would, would feel more comfortable making honest suggestions. One of the things that we really focused on were those suggestions that were what I'll call the negative comment. And why is that? Most people feel like that uh, things are going along great. Well, that, that's nice to know. But you don't improve an organization by simply reading the fact that 20 people said things are great. What you read are the six that said, well, there's some areas we can improve. One of the areas that was, was mentioned was our upcoming meeting in April where we'll have the volunteer supper. Tentatively, we're looking at April the 1st. That is the, the, the most likely date. And one of the questions that we asked was, how did you feel about the volunteer of the year? Most people said, oh, it was great. On the other hand, a lot of people wrote in, awfully difficult to do. We don't really have any standardized criteria. We all do a good job. We're all dedicated. Uh, even though we get nasty letters about our attendance, uh, we're all there. <laughs> and so what makes one person qualified to receive the volunteer of the year from this committee versus others? One committee chairman person told me that uh, they were concerned that it's just going to wind up in two or three years saying, okay, whose turn is it next? Well, that wasn't the purpose. <clears throat> So I'm going to tell you that the council has already agreed with the comments. We're moving away from a, a volunteer of the year from each board. Good. We are, however, going to have some what we'll call special recognitions because there are people who have served long and hard in many capacities and they deserve a special recognition. So we'll have some of those from time to time. The other thing that we heard was the comment in your December meeting with city council, the joint meeting, uh, you know, tell us your thoughts about that, that meeting. A lot of people said it was a nice supper. Okay, well, it was a nice supper. The real question is, did it accomplish anything? And the comments, most of them that were, uh, what I'll say in the negative comment category said, it really didn't accomplish anything. Because A, city council had to leave, they had to go to a council meeting. B, there was really no idea, no opportunity for real dialogue C, there was really no dialogue between advisory boards, you know, which I think those are, those are very constructive critiques. So we're currently analyzing the meeting in, in December of next year where we already have determined with the council there will be no city council meeting that night. That way we have much more time to spend on discussing the city and where we want it to go. Council is considering having the report session, and then after a short break, having another session where we take the advisory groups and we break them up into what I'll call fruit basket turnover, mixed groups. So a group would be made up of planning advisory board, water management, recreation and parks, environmental, CD, all in one group there. Another small group made up of mixed up another mixed up, another mixed up, and then so we can have cross-pollination, and then have some topics where we will ask each of those what I'll call mixed groups to bring back to the larger groups their thoughts. Now what would those topics be? Who knows? I mean they could be anything. 
we will vet with the city council what they would like to have input on. We don't know that's where we're going. We're just letting you know that the input we got back on the questionnaires we felt was valuable. I will also say to you that with that, we are going to be modifying. You know, this is not like an opinion poll. You know, how many people think, uh, you know, that uh, raisin bread is still the best bread? Okay, that's good. We'll continue to eat raisin bread. It's how do we, in how do we improve? That's what the questionnaire really is getting at. The second thing uh, relative to that is the city council continues to want us to find ways to really help you give advice. I mean, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but tonight I don't know that there's very much advice that's going to come out of this meeting. You know, it's going to be well wishes to Tim. Y'all did give me some advice regarding the future director, but what you're basically going to do is just give reports that this park looks clean, that water fountain needs to be fixed. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if we're going to use y'all as advisors, we have to find ways so that the advice is, is really advice. It's not just a comment about, well, there's litter down at Riverwalk Park. So we continue to struggle with that, and we would hope that you would feel free to read about what other communities do and how they use their advisory boards and how we can better use you. Is that a fair request? Okay. The last thing I, I would mention to you is uh, relative to some exciting things that are going on in the city. We talked about Jacksonville Landing. I think most of you have seen that Fisherman's Wharf is now gone. Uh, we're entering a new era of revitalization downtown. We've had you know, over 30 uh, vacant and dilapidated houses torn down downtown, a lot of commercial buildings that were vacant torn down. We have a lot of great things going on. This spring, which I guess starts maybe six weeks from now, okay. something like that officially, uh, the DOT will be taking that long median right where you have the fork in the road where the Exxon station is, where you choose to go Popkin Bridge or Buddy Phillips Bridge, that long concrete median in front of, uh, what's the restaurant there? The Arc. Uh, the Arc. Or the, well, Arc. The, the Arc, but no further uh, back. Um, Angie's. Angie's. In front of Angie's in that area. You know, that, uh, that median uh, should have been torn out probably at least a week ago, if not 20 years ago. <laughs> but we have a grant where all of that's going to be torn out and we're going to be putting in beautiful landscaping, low maintenance, with a watering system so it will stay vibrant. Uh, out at the, uh, across from uh, Camp Geiger, if you have uh, noticed coming in from Wilmington on 17, the, um, the Beirut Memorial Grove is actually being planted. And, you know, that's coming along very, very nicely. And as Tim has mentioned, the other things, we're just uh, very, very pleased. The Center for Public Safety downtown should be finished in May with the actual building. And then once they move in, we'll be tearing down the existing facility. So probably by October, that whole project will be finished. There's just a lot of uh, exciting things. It's a great time to, to be in Jacksonville. And we think that the things that you have done to set us on the path for parks and recreation improvements is going to be something that the person who comes in to continue to work with the staff and with you will find as a great benefit. It's always easier to come in when things are moving in the right direction than when everything has, has gone to you know where in a handbasket. So, but with that, uh, the only other comment that I would make is over at Northeast Creek, we are, as Tim said, we're about to uh, top it off over there. We. Actually, if we had had to buy and haul in everything that was hauled in, that would have been a $700,000 project. But through innovative staff approaches, especially Deanna Young, mm -hmm. uh, that entire project has cost us only $250,000. That's an amazing thing. And Tim did an exercise the other day that included taking the current JASA fields and laying them on top of that site. And the results were? Seven fields. Seven full-size fields can wow. fit there. You could more than, you know, almost double the, wow. the jazz of fields if, and I'm not suggesting they should move over there. I'm just trying to give you a perspective of, of area that we now have that has never been available to recreation that is coming available to recreation. So. Yeah, that's purely, I shouldn't say that, 99.23641% of it is just those lagoons that have been filled in. 
Yeah, yeah that's a, that was a lot of area. It's big. Yeah, yeah, it is. Any questions that you have of me of things going on in the city in any area? I, I, I have to admit I cheated. I watched last night on the, uh, on G10, <laughs> your, saying, your comments to the other, uh, what was it, Lord? Um, community development. Community development, when you mentioned the results of the survey, and, and from my perspective at least, it seemed like I'm holding two of those December meetings in comparison, the one we did last time versus the one we did before that. And it seemed like the one before that, it, we didn't seem as rushed. We had a lot more dialogue. Yeah. I think that's when we first started mentioning the um, after school programs at the mm -hmm. different schools, which I still think tends to be is still a very good thing for us. I mean, I'm getting comments all the time about how great that is. It's mm -hmm. just. You, you couldn't do better PR than that. Uh, and, and if I'm right and it is self-sustaining, then it's not really costing. No, it is now self-sustaining. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so it's a no-brainer. You know, when you get positive comments and it's not costing you money, I'll take that every single time. But uh, so maybe I, I just felt rushed last December. And I don't know whether it was because I was getting there from someplace and I felt rushed or whether it just seemed like the meeting afterwards was a more pressing thing. So I'm, I'm glad you're looking at that. Thank you. Just free advice. I appreciate <laughs> so it. You did get some. I appreciate that. <laughs> Anything else on any topic having to do with the city? <coughs> Is there a time capsule over at the old city hall or the police department that we're aware of? I have no idea. I've never been asked that question, but. Uh, I was just we'll wondering, because that's been there since I was born. Yeah. Uh, Way before then. What was it before it was? It used to be City, City Hall. Hall. Okay. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. So, this was the Bell Building. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We will be happy to ask that question because no one has, uh, has <laughs> asked that question. It's been there yep. forever yes. and a day, it seems like. Mm -hmm. So it may have been there before time was invented. It just may be a capsule. Is that what <laughs> middle aged folks might not know. <laughs> 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 well, I appreciate the fact that you were looking at me when you said us middle aged folks. That really made me feel good. That made my night. The other question I had, um, the Bay Route Memorial, the Grove, will there be signage? I don't, I don't remember if we discussed that or not. Yes. It will be. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, the DOT has agreed that as you uh, approach it from various directions, mm -hmm. that there will be signage so that people will know what they're coming up on, and then on the site itself, there will also be signage. Will there be access for folks to walk no, through there? No, no access at all? No. no. And and that's that was why the, I was hesitating in responding to your question. Right. Yeah, there will be some signage, that, but there's really not, this is not a grove that you invite people to come walk through. Yeah. The sad thing is the location that we originally wanted down here, where we actually had access for pedestrian and bicyclists, uh, because of wetland jurisdictional issues, that just simply was taken off the table. So, I was just wondering for those that, that lost a member at Bay Route, I know that the times flags are, are put up the trees. Would that still occur? Or is that something that we do, or is that it's going to be very difficult to because location. this location really does not have any yes. legal pull-off parking spots. Yeah. So, do I would I expect that there will be some uh, education that will have to go on right. with the general public? Yeah, I, I think there probably will. JPD will probably uh, have to do some educating. But does that does that pre does that preclude staff or somebody on special occasions doing something in that grove? And not necessarily. Like tying ribbons around it or doing something special in remembrance? Yeah. yeah. So Our guys will be over there yeah. maintaining it. So okay. yeah. Those type of things we can certainly do. Any other thoughts or questions of me on any city topic? But thank you so much for coming. I mean, and yes. taking our feedback on the Appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, I have some evening work still to do, so I'm going to be dismissed and wish y'all all well. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it gets us to old business. I don't know if we have any more old business. I think you already covered that. Yeah. <coughs> gets us to a planning advisory board liaison report. And we had no meeting. This last time, so that was easy. That'll be quick. <laughs> and we have no council liaison report, it looks like. So it gets us to member comments and <coughs> reports. Mr. Ross. Went out uh, last Wednesday, and there was about eight cars out there. Looks great. Of course, it's new, but it looked really good. And everybody was doing something different. On the, some were on the bars, some were on the little 
bouncy, horsey, bouncy, bouncy yeah, saddle mates. That's what they're called. Some were sitting on benches and some were at the picnic. So it covered everything. Everybody's happy. Okay, Lori. I went out there yesterday, and it was vibrant, vibrant with lots of people running around and kids. And mm -hmm. I uh, started to go down the bike trail, but it was kind of mucky. So I was like, uh, oh, to another day. But uh, everything looked good. That actually reminds me, Mr. Chair, if I could interject here on the Richard Ray part of the. Uh, the Jacksonville Jamboree, we are well into planning for that in our spring uh, citywide event, which is May 3rd. As of this morning, we got the approval to bring it. It's a complicated insurance issue. Uh, we're going to have three, how do, you, how do you describe them accurately? Uh, I think it was kitty rides, but we're going to have a carousel. We're going to have a, a, a train. We're going to have, what was the other one? Um, Tabs of fun. But another element that we're, <laughs> we're able to add to the event, um, aiming at really the, you know, the, the small children up to about nine or ten. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were, we were pleased to get the approval for that. All right. Uh, Mr. Spring with Phillips Park, Sherwood Forest, and Branch Wood. Branch would look fine. Um, Sherwood Forest uh, looked fine. There was only one person there, and they were just in their car eating lunch and just taking in the scenery. Uh, Phillips Park, we had a lot of people there, probably like 10 or 15 people there. Uh, you had somebody walking by the the, um, the waterway, and you had uh, four or five kids on the playground. Uh, you had a couple people eating, eating under the picnic shelter. Um, it was definitely low tide at Cheney Creek mm -hmm. because I could see on the side what was down about that far mm -hmm. and I could see the, the green stuff down there but mm -hmm. it looked like once you got in the middle mm -hmm. you could do more so I'm guessing that that mm -hmm. probably would be helpful when you're in a canoe. You'll definitely stay away from the sides. No, you don't want to step in that muck. No. Uh. Well in some of it some people either somebody was fishing or something but they pulled some of that green slime up mm -hmm. and some of it's on the, uh, the, the walkway. That's it. Okay. Lynn with uh, Woodlands. I haven't been to Woodlands in the past couple of weeks, but Car Street r ran by there Thursday, just tons of soccer kids and then the after school kids and basketball players. So it is such a multi use park and that's a that's a really good thing. And I think Car Street got a new awning in the or it looks mm -hmm. yes. those little things that and Northwoods is the prime example with the new it's probably been a couple months, but the new picnic tables, they're doing a little landscaping. Mm -hmm. They finally fixed the water pump and the mm -hmm. awning makes a world of difference. Yes. And I have been in the past two weeks inside Northwoods doing one of the um, classes that the oh, city great. offers and she's fabulous. And that facility looks great. There's been new flooring put in recently. Mm -hmm. So lots of good stuff there. So. That's, it's great. really nice to hear, Lynn, because those are the sorts of things over the last several years that we've been able to do within the, the fiscal constraints. We don't have the ability to change the footprint. Right. So what we try to do is renovate, rehab, and so I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, I think it looks it's great. working. So. Okay. Uh, went to Northeast Creek yesterday. Uh, there's a walk-in from Shadow Ridge Road, mm -hmm. and there's a anyway. The fence there has been there forever, and uh, so some of the railings are starting to fall down. Okay. So I don't know if you'll be able to secure them back up. They're in there with nails right now, and uh, but they're falling down. And I don't know if you're going to be able to get them to attach to the post because it's so old. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the park was heavily used yesterday. I mean, the playground had kids everywhere. Uh, it looked like they put a couple of new benches in there recently. Yeah, so that was good. Yeah. Uh, benches, trash cans, those sorts of things. This is the time of year when we try and recycle and, and put new ones in. And, and we have a life cycle for these sorts of pieces. So yeah. good. Again, I'm glad it's <laughs> noticed. Like yeah. Uh, the... Uh, Lots of people over at this disc golf course. Uh, I mean, any day that the sun's out, they're over there. 
uh, down at the boat ramp, uh, the parking lot was practically full, uh, but there was only one boat trailer. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm yeah. they're swimming. <laughs> gator you're, catching. You'll be gator bait if you go out in the Northeast Creek. Uh, so some guy with a, a canoe, uh, a lot of people fishing, a uh, bunch of people walking their dogs out there. Uh, the boardwalk's looking really sad. Uh, so I don't know what we're going to do with that. And then there's this giant pile of brush down by the boat ramp. Have you seen that? So I'm, I'm not really sure where it's coming from because I was looking around. It will be gone soon. No, I, I couldn't see where they've been taking it from. Yeah. Uh, that is primarily coming from the power lines, so not the city property. But if you were driving down towards the boat ramp, so now the boat ramp is on your left. In mm -hmm. front of you is this, looks like marshland, but that's where the main power line that goes up and down the east coast runs through there. I don't know if it's Duke or, or Jones Onslow or who the power company is, but they've been doing some work out in there. Mm -hmm. And so in order to get the crews out there and back, they had to do some clearing. Mm -hmm. They're replacing some, uh, some poles over there. Is that what it is? I was out there last week and talked to the foreman, and uh, they are replacing some of the power poles on, on both sides of uh, Northeast Creek. Mm -hmm. oh. You notice it was all torn up there within the, in the marshy area. Looked like they'd taken some tanks through there. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't notice that. I was just looking around yeah. in the park, and I just couldn't see we're all because there were some pretty good you know prunings and I just I was looking around I couldn't see it in the park I'm like where'd that come from well if, and again I'm gonna interject it's my last meeting um, what are you gonna do with the boardwalk I don't know <laughs> what are you guys who have the bully pulpit as advocates going to do with the boardwalk it, lo it looks bad <clears throat> and it's one of a kind in the region mm -hmm. one of a kind Taking you through the wetlands and mm -hmm. through the, you know, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful facility, but it's going to cost a, a lot of money if you have to replace the entire thing. Um, but there's also, you know, as, as we're finding with these smaller projects, you can phase things in, but it's going to have to become a priority mm -hmm. because it is relatively big money. Um, if you, you know, if we're just going to wait for money yeah. from heaven. Yeah. Uh, we're going to wait a long time. It's going to cost more. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. okay, And we've already had to close several of the, the bump outs because they, we couldn't repair them. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's safe. Don't misunderstand me, viewing public. Uh, we've blocked off the parts that, are, that weren't. But, yes, it's it's been used hard and well, and, and the, the weather. Even yeah, the weather speeded so, up yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, uh, Warren. Yes. Uh, then, for what it's worth, Woodlands is fine. Right there. <laughs> uh, uh, Sturgeon City is fine as well. Uh, and Amanda, thank you for the update on those test wells. Oh, yes. Find out what they what they actually did. Uh, it's been about a week since I've been on the trail, but it was fine the last time I saw it. Uh, and for what it's worth. Uh, I spoke to someone, and I can't uh, honestly remember who, but second or third hand, mm -hmm. <coughs> we are still in the pipeline to be included in the Mountains to the Sea Trail. Oh. There is still, they're looking at uh, coming down through Bladen County and then up through Pender and uh, through Onslow, obviously. And I must, I'm, the last I heard, they were then going to go over and go through their. Uh, Crotan or whatever mm -hmm. to connect mm -hmm. over toward uh, the noose or somewhere up that way. But anyhow, that was, uh, again, it was about second or third hand, but it was... That would be wonderful if... Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, Lauren, help me. Are we monitoring with the new construction on the trail, especially right there across from El Cerro? I'm not, mm -hmm. They are te tearing it up. And <laughs> yeah, last time oh, I... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I had, so, yeah. No, no, that's because I, I biked it last Friday. Mm -hmm. Is there, are you? Yes. I see a lot of traffic on that. I mean, well, that's a, whole nother, that's a whole other, yeah, we probably all, probably need an alternative trail to that segment at this point. But, you know, when they're doing that construction, there's a bulldozer and half the, or a big swath gone. And yeah, I assume I we're. What is, what is guaranteed in the contract 
is returning it to its original condition, you know, quote unquote. Um, the challenge becomes, unless there's a recreation and parks staff going by every day, sure. the condition it's left in daily is not always up mm -hmm. to our standards, even for, um, you know, being in, in the midst of, of work. Mm -hmm. That is not always a priority for the contractor Absolutely. nor for the folks that are monitoring the pro that project. Um, but yeah, we're aware of it, and we're we're to the extent that we can, we're influencing it. It's, and especially now with the weather being so bad, where you're having to pull off is mm -hmm. soup. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So anyway, I knew y'all knew that. No, thank you. Yes. All right, Jim. I looked at Brook Valley Park uh, sometime last week. I forget which day. Everything looked great. The other thing I noticed, I sent Tim and Steve, I think I CC'd you and one of the uh, uh, light poles just down the other side of the wooden footbridge. Somebody had taken the globe out and it's laying right at the base of the pole. I don't know what they thought they were doing. <laughs> but uh, Tim, you said you already put a work order? Yes. Sir. Yeah, that's one of the uh, uh, maintenance of those light poles. is not something our park staff do. It's with a different division in the city. So we have to put in a work order. But yes, thanks to your heads up, we put it in that day. I don't know if they've gotten to it yet, but we put it in that day. Yeah, it wasn't an hour ago that I came by there. But the globe's still there. I don't know if the globe is usable or not. Uh, it didn't look like it was shattered. <laughs> Usually they shoot them with a shotgun. And then, of course, right. when they do that, it's nothing but glass. Mm -hmm. This one uh, is sitting right at the base of the pole. It might be reusable, retouchable. With any luck. Yeah. All right, Samantha? Wilson Bay, I went about a week ago over to Wilson Bay and everything was good. Okay. And Ashley, you got any comments? Mm -hmm. um, I just want to thank the staff at the City Parks and Rec. Um, we are working with them right now on countywide high school volleyball jamboree again. Um, so the high schools are working through their date, but Amanda has been great facility-wise. Last year's event went off beautifully and all the coaches were very very pleased with the event um, the ADs are actually looking at it as a potential revenue source for them which for the ADs to acknowledge that volleyball could be a revenue source is always um, a win for all of us um, so you know between that and they've been doing great work um, on the jamboree on the sports side of it um, if you guys didn't hurt I know Susan gave the update they've got basketball tournament is going to be a national tournament. They've got about 80 teams. Um, we've been working with Tom on the hotel RFP side of it. Um, USAT is doing, or USTA, um, is doing, sorry, I've been looking at running routes, so I've been on their website. Um, but USTA is going to be doing a sanctioned tournament, and that's to the good work that they've, they've done. So it definitely makes my job easier when they're so phenomenal over there. So, good. Great. Okay, uh, next meeting scheduled uh, March 24th, <coughs> 6 p.m. I've got one thing real quick. Um, I'm also on the Community Development Board, and I don't know if Amanda can get us get everyone copies, but they do a survey, a, a survey monkey. Uh, and a lot of the comments that came back that our citizens did mention had to do with youth, what to do with our youth, and pools, and there's a huge factor. I didn't know if you can get that from Lily. <coughs> or maybe email it out to everybody. Mm -hmm. That way, everyone here can see from, you know, mixing kind of boards. I was like, that's Parks and Rec. That's Parks and Rec. That's Parks and Rec. That's Parks and Rec. And flipping the page, you know, and that's Parks and Rec. So everyone can see what the survey, what they were looking for. Uh, it was very informative, I thought. Maybe you can get copies to everybody. Mm -hmm. That way they can see it. Mm -hmm. And then I did stop at Jack M. yet Saturday. There was a bunch of guys out there playing basketball just to kind of see how they liked it. They do. They just want more benches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that can be done. Yeah. They just. I mean, the, the whole court was crowded, and I stopped out there just to talk to them and see how they liked mm -hmm. the court and what was going on. And they had their comments were very colorful. It was enjoyable to listen to them. <laughs> but the main of it, they would like more benches. <laughs> <laughs> Last month, you had requested yes. a letter of appreciation for the staff and the department, so I had that here for all of you to sign. Thank you. And the only other thing for you guys, as Richard mentioned, um, as, as, as late as recently as 11 o'clock this morning, 
we decided about the transition plan and that Susan and Michael are going to sort of tag team. Um, part of that relates to you guys too. Their plan as of 2.30 this afternoon is for both of them to be here each month. Amanda will continue to do the uh, minutes, the agenda, and she'll be the, the, the conduit. But because some of the questions, some of the reporting has to do with both sides of the house, you really wouldn't be getting a full picture if just one or the other of them were here. So at least for the time being, the plan is for both of them to, to be here with you each month. Okay. The uh, Extreme Science Club over Coastal Carolina last March or April uh, in the River Foundation, we did a tire exercise in Northeast Creek and pulled out like 60 mm -hmm. some tires. They're planning a repeat of that on the 22nd of March. I thought I'd mention it now and hopefully it thinks me that I can give you a report on uh, what we find this time. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of a partnership between the Ex uh, Extreme Science Club there. Dr. Kathy Songer is their advisor. Mm -hmm. And then the New River Foundation that furnishes the huge John boat mm -hmm. and the canoes and kayaks. Hopefully you won't find nearly as many tires this year. They're, they're, they're scattered more, but there's still some out there that have been missed, and unfortunately, some of them have been replenished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, anything else? All right, 24 March, 6 p.m. right here. Looking for a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. All right.